us. Yeah, um, thanks. For the CX30 and doing everything that you do for Mazda. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, I didn't have you read these questions so you can say pass or whatever. That's oh, fine. Don't okay, worry about it. All right, cool. What is your favorite thing about the CX30? Uh, so, most of it is the interior space. Uh, I think they did a good job in terms of relative to the segment. When you look at like CHR, HRV, like the tracks and the Eco Sport, things like that, and you yeah. get in here, it's like a totally different class. Okay. Um, it's super quiet and it's super comfortable, and everything's very intuitive. Um, I think the only thing that certain people would complain about maybe is size. It doesn't feel big because of the way they try to make it fitted. So if you're coming from like a bigger car or something with a lot of glass, it still feels like smaller even though it really isn't. But if you're coming from a CX-3, it's going to feel Oh my god, it's going to feel huge. Yeah. It's, it feels way bigger than the Mazda 3 though. How do you think this will turn out for Mazda? I can't predict that. I mean, if they're right about this segment being so hot given the price point because like this is more of the base with all wheel drive but it's a really good deal. it's really nice yeah. I, I mean at 24 grand i can see a lot of people doing it i don't know how many like once they're out longer what the discounts will be but uh i think it'll do well speaking of which did you get a replacement for the civic not yet not yet okay. i'm trying to figure that out nice all right i'm trying to keep this as professional no you're good no you're good all right so uh now, you mentioned before that uh, services like telematics were not in Mazda. Is it in this one? Yes. So it's, they can track you? Technically, they could if they wanted to, because it's tied into GPS, obviously, cell tower geolocation and stuff like that. Um, I haven't asked them specifically what their, their data logging, but they could technically. Okay. okay. When you were out with press and testing, you were out in California. Yeah. So, were there any mishaps or malfunctions during testing or driving? Not in the group that I was in. Okay. It was really solid. Uh, there were no issues. Um, I don't think there was even really any serious complaints about anything. Okay, awesome. And I think that there wasn't, like, even the, the other people of the media that I talked to, there wasn't really, I mean, it was just the same complaints you hear about every car. Certain people don't like info, they info team. They don't like that it's not a touch screen. They don't like, how it's so simple or they don't like you know it's all these like little nitpicky things that you, you can really uh, copy and paste on any car yeah. so but yeah no 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 mechanical issues not no problems so Good. what's your best uh, description of uh, off-road traction assist i think you sum that up uh so the off the the calibration the way that they do this traction stability control and i kind of go into this in the video that i'm doing mazda does one of the best jobs about making sure that it doesn't come in like if you've ever got out of a Hyundai product or a Toyota product, if you break traction or you start to lose a little bit of control, it's almost like the electronics come in and turn the car off. Like literally, it's like, oh, what's happening? Turn off power. This, as a driver, you feel nothing. It just kind of works and it's not invasive. So you don't get a lot of blinking lights. It just kind of gets through it with feeling very natural. So that's one of the things I, I like about their tractions and all-wheel drive system on this. And it, like even out here, you get a little bit of snow, you don't feel it at all. Good. What do you think is the closest competitor to this, to this CX-30 now? I would say the best other option would be the Hyundai Kona. Okay. The Kona is pretty much, that if you're going to look at this, it would be the Kona. Um, but the Kona to me doesn't, it's nowhere near as quiet, it's nowhere near as comfortable. That Those are the two. Okay. Did they update the trans at all? Because it feels quick. They, supposedly they did some ECU change, like shift logic changes, okay. but they're never going to tell you why. Okay. Like it's all on the back end from the drivetrain engineers, right? Might rework that, and I think some of it's reworked for the fact for the fact that this is supposed to be more of a, a CUV, like an off whatever. It's not off roady, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it feels slightly different, but you're, you, I don't think anybody would notice it. On a, on a rev match, I don't think that would change. Feel well, that, that, that it feels responsive, but in terms of like daily driving, yeah. I, I can't tell the difference between a Mazda 3 or like True. a CX-5. It's, it feels the same to me. Okay.
Yeah, the, so the next week, you're gonna see a documentary on the Mazda Miata. I was wondering if you were gonna mention that. That is exciting. Yeah, it's five videos, five days, well, technically it's six videos, but five days in a row of every generation Miata. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, that should be fun. <laughs> well, and I'm glad that you guys are doing it. You know, when uh, Jack said he met um, the original designer or engineer, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's a milestone in your career. Well, yeah, hopefully, and a lot of the guys that were involved in the projects were kind of like, weird at first because it's strange right but yeah. once you once they got talking about the car and like the history and all the nostalgia they were really excited about being a part of it because i guess legacy wise right if you're a car designer or a car builder most companies don't have something that is like historic right yes. like most of the cars that are out there nobody even's going to think about in 20 years or 30 years so mazda has one that's very unique and i think they're all really proud of it yeah it's powerful yeah it's powerful. Um, speaking of talking to designers and stuff like that, do you have, actually have Dave Coleman's phone number? I have his email. I don't have his cell phone. Okay, just checking. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I would. I don't think even if I had his cell phone, I think he'd just be like, "Dude, don't ever call me again." Yeah. <laughs> Unless it was about something like legit, you know. Yeah. What was the um, the most memorable? I don't know. Mishap of a manufacturer's event or something like that. Do you recall anything happening that? was kind of, you know, a problem or? Uh, I, for me, when this when I had the Mazda 3 during the launch, I totally, I beached that thing in the middle of a those natural oh, forest. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that, that was more me, okay. like, I, I did that. But um, there's never been anything really serious besides, like, people getting minor fender benders or stuff okay. like that. Um, I've heard stories from, like, past events, but that was, like, long, long ago. But it's mostly like logistical stuff that the manufacturers have to deal with. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. has there ever, ever been like a mix up in itineraries or anything like that? For yeah, it's mostly like little stuff. Timing. Um, people aren't where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be. People like flights. It's all like crap that's back end okay. stuff, like any event planning. Okay. But it's going good so far. Yeah, right? like from the Mazda perspective, there wasn't there was nothing wrong with this one. Okay. Did you ever think about like maybe going undercover as a car salesman and just like maybe documenting that? I thought about it. I mean, it would be an interesting like you're talking about working at a dealership, like being yeah. in a dealership and just faking being a car salesman. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I have thought about how that would be showing how the general public are, but I think it would be tricky liability wise, right? Sure. Like yeah. you would almost. You would have to go sneak in, and then after the fact, you would either you would probably have to get them to sign a waiver. And I don't think most people would. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, I would love to try it. It's incredible because uh, how much you can get away with at a car dealership or dealer place. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, because the people could technically, if you make the customer look bad, the first thing they're going to do is try to sue the dealership or you, like for putting them out there. Yeah. Um, People don't want to be made to look bad. That's tricky in what you do, though, because you you got to watch what you say for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but then you also got to deliver honestly and naturally what yeah. your your feelings of things are. What would you when you say that? Do you mean how to show what it's like dealing with customers, or just to show the experience? You know, everybody still is in love with the vehicle mm -hmm. and the automobile. They're just not in love with going to buy one. Right. So I just. I, I mean, it's a really interesting discussion to have because it's something that we constantly have with manufacturers. Certain brands have a real problem with the dealership experience, yeah. almost to the point where people go in and they never want to go back to that brand again. And I, it's, it's a lot of brands that have this issue. Um, but the problem in America, at least, is everything's franchised out. The, the manufacturers only have so much control because that's the way the system's set up. And you can't come in, like you could make the best car in the world, have the wor best car, have the worst dealership, the worst sales team, and post support sales team. And you could literally just tarnish that brand for life. Yeah. So the manufacturers don't have full control, but then again, like the manufacturer, the dealership side, you have part you know, margin issues, you have management issues, you have overhead issues. It's, it's a very complicated process. It is. If you remember not so long ago when the Mazda 3 launched, and the publications or the journalists didn't really, they kind of beat it up as far as like ride comfort or we switch the suspension in the back and they weren't a fan of it. And now if you Google any reviews of the CX-30, 
same chassis, but they're in love with it. Right. It's it's crazy. I don't know if you noticed that. But yeah, it, it's just the. I think unfortunately, a lot of the publications and journalists do not look at it from what the reality is. They wanted the Mazda three to be this sports car hot hatch, and that is like. 1% of the market, True. and it's the most vocal 1% of the market. Um, it's not that I don't disagree with some of it. I feel like Mazda should have some performance hatch, but that's not their direction, and they were very clear about it not being their direction. That doesn't mean that the Mazda 3 is a bad car. It's just they are not going down the performance air arena with it at this point for money, for development costs. There's a whole bunch of reasons that I understand that, that doesn't mean that I like it, but that doesn't mean the Mazda 3 is a bad car. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. It's just softer, more compliant, and it's still a good car. Um, but again, it's it's what's here. What are your your preconceived notions of a product can really have a, a dict it can really dictate how you objectively or subjectively view it. And I think a lot of people just expected the Mazda 3 to be something else. They saw that they were taking out independent rear suspension. They, and they immediately discounted it. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Will you be hiring any more crew for your uh, for your adventures? Not in the near future. Not no. in the near future? No. I, I will be eventually, but not right now. That's good. Uh, I think I think I covered everything. But, um, oh yeah, what happened? There's no more Angry Guy trailer at the end of your videos anymore. We're, we're, we're coming up with some new ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... I thought you were going to be like, oh, we're mature now. We're no. We're more premium now. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we don't have the premium branding yet. No, there's going to be new ones, and I think it just, I, for me, like, creating the stuff, after when I see it getting stale, like, I just ax it. So, yeah. I, like, I want new ones, and I won't run those into the ground, so... Well, then, um, congratulations on almost... 300,000 subscribers. Yeah, thank you. That is pretty cool. Yeah, it's neat. It is. Um, and I thank you for all the fun that we've had with the camera that you <laughs> provided us. Yeah. Um, I put it to work a lot and make some awesome projects. And Good. Ones that make us laugh, ones that make us cry, and ones that document artists who need to be seen. And cool. So it's it's a pleasure to do business with you. Yeah, and thanks, man. I appreciate it. You, so. Yeah, and if you're watching this, probably, you know, James here has been here for quite a long time and he's so honest like just ni just a genuinely nice person so Thank like you. i would anybody that's local and there's some people i don't send you because i know they're a nightmare <laughs> if you're a good person and you want to buy a car and you know if you're here on mark's behalf i thank you very much for subscribing so yeah. Until we see each other again, have a uh, great Yeah, time. thanks, man. I appreciate thanks it. Again for doing the yeah, thanks for helping me out with some of this stuff. It's great. Awesome. Thank you, guys.